Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. It has been a very busy week, to say the least, in regards to exciting and controversial spaceflight news. For example, the accusations being made by CNBC that Starship, or rather Starbase, has been dumping lots of wastewater illegally, some of it containing toxic chemicals into the water sources around Boca Chica and SpaceX responding that CNBC has been lying about all of that and the government sadly has been remaining completely quiet about the whole thing at least up to this point. And then we had a very exciting tour of Blue Origins facilities carried out by Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut. Or at least most of it was exciting, except for the parts where Blue Origin blurred out everything that we were looking at, except, of course, for Jeff Bezos's swole biceps. But the really big news in spaceflight has been something that was revealed only yesterday, and that is Sierra Space's current plan to purchase ULA. We're not sure exactly how far along they are in this process, but I'm going to show you why this event is far more significant than anything else that has happened so far this week, because it has the potential to create an entirely new spaceflight company that could really shake up competitive spaceflight around the world. All this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to another Angry Bulletin. I first of all encourage all of you to check out Tim Dodd's tour of the Blue Origin facility. Props to Tim for getting access to such a very secretive company, in spite of the fact that they seem to have blotted out many of the details of his tour, which frankly I found to be a little bit insulting, at least on behalf of Tim. But another thing that Blue Origin did unwittingly during this tour is demonstrate why they are not a very good company to be purchasing ULA. They demonstrated a lot of things about the New Glenn rocket, the materials involved in the construction, the fact that it has a 7 meter fairing and utilizes the same BE-4 engines that Vulcan Centaur uses. Therefore, why would they want to continue manufacturing the Vulcan Centaur, a rocket with a smaller fairing, a rocket that uses the same engines, and a rocket that also utilizes lots of high-end materials the same way New Glenn does? Really, it just seems to me that Vulcan Centaur would be a bit of a step down for Blue Origin in terms of something to add to their stable of rockets, and really the true objective, as I've mentioned many times, times is to simply eliminate a competitor from the field. And also, we got to see just how secretive this company is during the course of the tour, blotting out or blurring out so many details in what was being described. Very odd that Jeff Bezos would allow Tim and his staff to point cameras at various parts of the facility, only to have his security team essentially blot out everything except for him. If you're going to describe your technology, at least give us a little picture of what it looks like. And this was, in my opinion, the most comical and the most insulting part of the tour. Everything in this shot is blurred out, including Tim Dodd. The only thing that isn't blurred out is Jeff Bezos. I must say that this was a far cry from the tour that Sierra Space gave me of their facility. Granted, there were quite a number of things that they didn't want me pointing my camera at, but at least I knew what those things were ahead of time. And also, even after the tour was completed, Sierra Space then went into the areas where I was not permitted and took their own footage and provided that footage to me in order to give us more of a comprehensive look at their facilities. And Sierra Space definitely has sensitive technology to protect as well. I just found them to be a lot more open and a lot more friendly towards journalists than Blue Origin seems to be, at least in this particular example. However, to be fair, there's plenty of things about the tour that aren't blotted out. Definitely interesting stuff, and I encourage you folks to check it out. 
All of that having been said though, Sierra Space and what they're doing at the moment is the big news of the week. And I'm just going to go ahead and read you an exclusive article from Reuters. And incidentally, I did request a comment from Sierra Space as well about this issue and they did respond, but they said they couldn't tell me any more than what was already in this article. Hopefully we'll get some more details soon. But here's the bottom line, quote, Boeing and Lockheed Martin are in talks to sell their rocket launching joint venture United Launch Alliance to Sierra Space, two people familiar with the discussion said. A deal could value ULA at around $2 billion to $3 billion, the sources said. A deal to sell ULA, a major provider of launch services to the U.S. government and a top rival to Elon Musk's SpaceX, could mark a significant shift in the U.S. space launch industry as ULA separates from two of the largest defense contractors to a smaller privately held firm. The potential sale comes after years of speculation about ULA's future and failed attempts to divest the joint venture over the past decade. In 2019, Boeing and Lockheed Martin reportedly explored selling ULA but couldn't agree on terms with the potential buyers. The negotiations could end without a deal, the sources said. ULA referred Reuters to Boeing and Lockheed for comment. The two companies said they do not comment on market speculation. Sierra did not immediately return a request for comment. Well, that makes me feel special because they actually did return my request for comment, but we'll go on. Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin and Cerberus Capital Management had placed bids in early 2023 for the company, according to people familiar with the negotiations. Rocket Lab had also expressed interest, two people said. None of these discussions led to a deal. Rocket Lab could not immediately be reached. A potential deal would be an ambitious move for Sierra Space, spun off from Sierra Nevada's Corp in 2021 to focus on bringing to market its its long-delayed Dream Chaser space plane and building a private space station habitat with Blue Origin. Sierra Space has weighed a public offering. A potential deal could accelerate deployment of its crewed spaceflight business, analysts said. A ULA acquisition, they said, would give the company in-house access to launch vehicles that could send its space plane and space station components into Earth's orbit rather than spending hundreds of millions of dollars for those launches as a customer. For Boeing, the potential sale of ULA represents a strategic move under new CEO Kelly Ortberg, who took the helm in August. A deal would allow Boeing to concentrate on its core aerospace and defense businesses while reaping some cash from ULA's sale. Okay, so that's the basics of the story, but here's the bottom line as to why this is such a big deal. Sierra Space doesn't have any launch vehicles to transport the Dream Chaser or its space station components or anything else that it's currently manufacturing to low Earth orbit. Having access to Vulcan Centaur would be a huge advantage to this company. It would actually completely transform what it has to offer a customer. It would go from being a company that provides some orbital services, but certainly not all, to providing a comprehensive collection of services from launch pad to orbit and beyond. Up to this point, Sierra Space has been designing just about all of their technologies for ULA products. The Dream Chaser is designed to launch inside the fairing of Vulcan Centaur. Also, the life modules for Sierra Space space station. Those are designed for five meter fairings, at least the basic module, the one that's probably going to be the most frequently used. Those are designed to be deployed inside Vulcan Centaur fairings. And in addition to that, Sierra Space offers a range of services and capabilities once the customer gets to orbit that ULA frankly doesn't have. Yeah, the ULA Centaur 5 does have the potential of becoming a reusable space tug out in orbit and perhaps even for cis lunar missions, but Sierra Space takes things to a completely different level. The Dream Chaser is obviously capable of delivering cargo to a wide variety of destinations out in orbit, but also the Shooting Star module, which can be launched either with or without Dream Chaser, has its own propulsion 
system, its own power system, its own capabilities of becoming its own small-scale space station to be used either in Earth orbit or perhaps at destinations beyond that. Because keep in mind, Sierra Space is also manufacturing their own family of engines called Vortex, which are designed for use out in space, mostly in orbit, but also perhaps beyond orbital configurations. Because keep in mind, once Vulcan Centaur deploys a payload, Sierra Space's collection of spacecraft and unique thrusters could serve as sort of a kickstage for any payload on board a Vulcan Centaur, providing additional Delta V, helping a payload, say, get from geosynchronous transfer orbit all the way out to the moon, or perhaps low Earth orbit out to geosynchronous orbit, providing additional capabilities above and beyond the capabilities of Vulcan Centaur. And it gets even better than that, because human-rated spaceflight is just around the corner for Sierra Space. They're already working on a human-rated Dream Chaser, which hopefully should be ready to go by 2026 or 2020. 27, and now that Starliner has taken a serious nosedive, it could be that ULA is wondering what they're going to use all those Atlas Vs that were slated for Starliner use in the future. All these human-rated rockets, are they going to use them for just ordinary payloads? Or might they be used to carry human-rated dream chasers up into orbit in order to start transferring future crews up to Sierra Space's private space stations? All that is speculation on my part, but if it turns out that Starliner doesn't really have need for all those Atlas Vs, I can think of no better use for them. So the bottom line is this. Sierra Space and ULA each have services that perfectly complement one another. Sierra Space doesn't have launch vehicles capable of reaching orbit, and ULA doesn't have a very wide variety of spacecraft that they can make use of once a customer reaches orbit. Both companies have exactly what the other needs to become a much more potent competitor, a company that could take on the likes of SpaceX and especially Blue Origin. As a matter of fact, I think this kind of alliance would be extremely dangerous to Blue Origin. And at the same time, extremely important to Jeff Bezos's company because the BE-4 engines are going to have to be churned out at an ever-increasing rate given how many contracts ULA currently has with Vulcan Centaur, especially with all those Kuiper missions that Jeff has going. So an interesting future relationship between all of these companies, assuming all of this actually goes forward. And I really hope that it does. This is a match made in heaven. It doesn't require that anybody loses their jobs. It doesn't require that any manufacturing facilities get shut down. Even from a geographic standpoint, this is a match made in heaven. Sierra Space's facilities are just to the north of Denver, whereas ULA's facilities are just to the south of Denver in the Tech Center. A short drive from one another. All of this would work extremely well to produce a well-oiled machine that could take on just about anybody in the spaceflight arena and really give companies like SpaceX a run for their money, which is something we need these days. We absolutely need a new competitive environment with companies who embrace innovative technology, who embrace reusability. Sierra Space definitely does that and who embrace new ways of doing things to be successful in the future. And I really think that Sierra Space and ULA together could be just that kind of company. The kind of company that SpaceX has been for some time, and the kind of company, frankly, that Sierra Space has been as well for quite some time, and the kind of company that ULA could become very rapidly, especially when one considers how closely these companies have worked together in the past 
anyway. Thank you very much for watching. Also, I have my tour of the Sierra Space facilities linked at the end of this video. It remains an exclusive tour. I haven't seen anything like it on YouTube, so you might want to check that out. Also, I would like to thank Robert Dela Cruz, who has been a longtime and generous supporter of this channel, who just made another contribution to my getting across the Atlantic to cover the upcoming Crew 9 mission at Cape Canaveral. Can't wait for all of that. Thank you so much for everything you do for this channel, Robert. And if you would like to join him in supporting my efforts, all the details are in the description. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, stay angry about space.